Right, sorry about that. Um, my last video, I uh, did not realize, this is the first time I've done this, first time I've live streamed or streamed or recorded anything on YouTube. Again, this, this first one is not live, but uh, <clears throat> I've never done this before and so I thought maybe I could splice two videos together. Apparently the app that I'm using doesn't allow you to do that, so my apologies. Um, we'll begin with uh, now, finally, this video of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for Monday of the third week of Lent. I'm offering Mass this evening for all those suffering from the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, throughout the world. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note. You can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God, and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on. And bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there, are, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just say a few words very briefly for those of you who are watching at home. Uh, once again, uh, if you're just seeing this, my name is Father Patrick Boehm. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Sioux City, Iowa, which is uh, the northwest corner of the state of Iowa. And just like so much of the rest of the United States, we are uh, we're trying to practice social distancing from one another. Um, I'm all alone here in my, uh, in my private chapel in my home. Uh, offering the Holy Mass uh, for you uh, who are watching this, for all who are suffering the effects of the coronavirus. But uh, I think it's important in this time, in these days, to really keep in mind what exactly the Lord is, is trying to do. The Lord is always trying to draw us closer to himself. That's the mission, the goal of the Christian life, really, to become a disciple. And a disciple is someone who follows in the way of the Master. And so our Lord Jesus, our Master, is always striving to draw us closer to himself. How is he doing that in these days? Well, we can reflect on that in, in the days and the times to come. I, I wrote something about it yesterday. But I really see the hand of the Lord, the hand of providence here in a couple of different ways. One is he's, he's killing some of our idols. He's killing the idol of our, our adoration of money as we watch uh, what, what's happening in our stock market right now. He's killing the idol, so many of us, you know, certainly myself included, those of you who know me, that we might have of professional sports. There are no professional sports right now. This is completely uncharted territory in, in our nation's history, really, if you think about it. He, he's killing the idol of busyness that we have, where we worship at this altar of, I have to do this and then this and then that. We have all these different things to do. And the Lord is saying, no, for, the, for a little while, you're going to have nothing but time. And so the question is, what do we do with that time? What do we do with that time? 
we can, I suppose, sit in our rooms and our homes and binge watch Netflix for hours on end. But I would encourage you to really take time to pray and to be with your families. To pray and to be with your families. So many other things can crowd out our relationship with the Lord Jesus and with our families, which really are the only things that matter. But then in in the midst of all of that, we have to trust that there will be a resurrection. There is a resurrection. This will not last forever. This is not the end. The Lord has not and will not abandon us. All will be well. As the scriptures say, this too shall pass. Naaman, in our first reading, he had that faith. He had that faith that God could and would heal him. And so Naaman is able, reluctantly, admittedly, admittedly reluctantly able, after the prompting of his servants, but able to receive what God desires to give. Now, he did receive a physical healing. Naaman the Syrian was cleansed of his leprosy, a disease in in the ancient world far more contagious than COVID-19. Naaman was cured of his leprosy. But a bigger healing, if you will, is what we see take place at the end of that reading, where Naaman says, I know that there is no God except the God of Israel. And so in the midst of, of, of the suffering that we are going through, of seeing people panicking and being anxious and buying up all the toilet paper at the grocery store and everything else. In the midst of all of that, we know that that this will pass. This physical suffering will pass. The only question is, will we be healed in soul, in our spirit, as well as in our bodies? Will we, like Naaman the Syrian, at the end of this, be able to say, I know that there is no God except God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and his Son whom he sent to live among us, the Lord Jesus Christ. We present some of our needs to our Heavenly Father. We pray, of course, for our Holy Father Francis, for our Pope Emeritus Benedict, We pray for all of the bishops throughout the world. I want to especially remember in prayer today the bishop of my own diocese, uh, Ralph Walker Nicholas. We pray for all who are striving to lead the church through these very difficult times. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the elected leaders of our country and of our world. We remember President Trump in our prayers our elected leaders in Congress, um, for anyone who may be watching from another country, we remember your own leaders in prayer as they strive and, and seek to find the best way forward to deal with what is really an unprecedented crisis in human history. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life. We also pray for an increase in vocations to faithful and holy marriages. We pray that young people around the world will hear the Lord's call to serve him in whatever way he is calling, that they will respond joyfully. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today especially for all who are sick and suffering, all who are sick and suffering from the coronavirus, all who are sick and suffering from other illnesses that that we may forget about in these times. We pray for them and for their complete and total healing of mind, body, and soul, We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially today for all those who have died, and especially we remember all those who have have died as a result of the COVID-19 virus. We pray for their eternal repose, and that they, now we trust and hope and pray, seated before the Father, might intercede on our behalf. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we entrust these needs and cares to your loving mercy. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And by you, Christ, be safe for eternal life. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love toward us, towards us is great. For those watching at home, I invite you to, at this time, make a spiritual communion, inviting the Lord Jesus into your heart and your soul. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, bow down for the blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for watching, everyone. My plan is to do this every day, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, that, that would be Central in the United States. So uh, 8 a.m. Central Time. And then on Sunday at 9 a.m. We'll give you a little extra time to sleep. I kind of figure uh, 8, 8 o'clock most days is a happy medium between uh, those who want to take advantage of this, of this time off, really, and maybe catch up on some sleep and those that, uh, that still have to work, um, certainly our doctors and nurses, uh, grocery store workers, um, those who are, are at pharmacies, pharmacists, uh, clerks that work there, all sorts of people, police, firefighters, people who we really need uh, to get us through a time like this. So certainly keep them in prayer. I want to make this as available as possible to as many as possible. And so I do thank you for watching. Um, once again, don't worry, all will be well. At the end of the day, we know the end of the story. The Lord Jesus wins. Finally, uh, at each of these liturgies, I want to end by chanting the proper Marian antiphon to the season that we're in right now, of course, the season of Lent, uh, and eventually well, the season of Easter. Um, but right now, the proper Marian antiphon is the Ave Regina Celorum, the Hail Queen of Heaven. And so I'll, I'll chant that. I invite you to chant this with me at home if you, uh, if you don't know it. Um, just listen. If you do, sing along. Um, but certainly it's good to implore Our Lady's help and, and Our Lady's intercession at this time. I don't have the translation here ready, readily available. I will try to remember that tomorrow. So let us sing. Ave Regina Celorum. Ave Domina Angelorum, salve radix, salve porta, ex qua mundo lux est orta, gaude virgo gloriosa, super omne speciosa, vale o valde decora, ne pro nobis, Christum ex ora.